Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. It was a regular evening. My wife, Clara, and I sat on our worn-out sofa, the TV playing some forgettable show in the background. Our marriage on the surface seemed like any other. We shared laughs, handled household chores together, and supported each other through tough times. But beneath this facade of normalcy, something wasn't quite right. One night, as the clock ticked softly in the background, Clara turned to me with a serious look in her eyes. I've been thinking, she began hesitantly, maybe we should consider having an open relationship. Her words struck me like a bolt of lightning. I felt a mix of confusion and hurt swirling inside me. Why would she want this? Were we not happy together? Despite the turmoil inside me, I asked her why she felt this way. Clara explained that she needed something different, something new. She thought seeing other people might bring a spark back into our lives. I couldn't wrap my head around it, but deep down, I feared losing her. So with a heavy heart, I agreed. If this was what it took to keep our marriage alive, I was willing to try. In the midst of this upheaval, I had my own secret, a part of me I'd kept hidden for years. I had always been fascinated by the idea of cross-dressing and felt a strong attraction towards transgender women. However, I never dared to express these feelings, fearing judgment and misunderstanding. Now, with the boundaries of our relationship changing, I saw an opportunity to explore this hidden side of myself. The thought both excited and scared me. I had no idea where to start or what to expect, but I knew I had to take this chance to discover a part of me that had been suppressed for so long. A few days after our conversation, Clara started going out more, meeting new people. I watched her get ready, applying makeup with practiced ease, choosing outfits that made her feel confident. Meanwhile, I started my own journey of self-exploration. I started small, ordering a few pieces of women's clothing online, nothing too flashy, just simple dresses and skirts. When they arrived, I waited for a day when Clara was out to try them on. The moment I slipped into a dress, a strange sense of comfort washed over me. It felt right, in a way I couldn't fully understand. Next, I ventured into the world of makeup. I watched countless tutorials online, learning how to apply foundation, eyeshadow, and lipstick. It was challenging at first, my hands shaky and unsure, but with each attempt, I got better and the person looking back at me in the mirror started to align more with the image I had in my mind. I also experimented with wigs, finding that I preferred long, wavy styles that framed my face softly. Each element I added, whether it was a dress, makeup, or a wig, helped me piece together a version of myself that felt more genuine than I had ever felt before. As I continued exploring this new side of myself, I realized that I needed to see the outside world through this new lens. The thought of stepping out dressed as a woman was terrifying, but it was a fear I knew I had to face. I chose a quiet night, when the streets were less crowded, to take my first steps outside. Dressed in a modest knee-length skirt and a simple blouse, makeup done to the best of my ability, and a wig that fell gently around my shoulders, I stepped out of our house. My heart pounded in my chest with every step, but with each passing moment, my confidence grew. The cool night air felt different, somehow more alive, as I walked down the street. I was acutely aware of every glance thrown my way, but to my surprise, most people didn't give me a second look. It was exhilarating and liberating in a way I'd never experienced before. I found myself eagerly waiting for the moments when I could explore my new interest in cross-dressing. With Clara often out meeting new people, I had the house to myself, which gave me the freedom to experiment more with my appearance. One afternoon, I decided to try something different. I picked out a bright red dress for my growing collection. It was knee-length and had a simple, elegant cut. I paired it with a pair of black flats that I had bought online. Standing in front of the mirror, I felt a wave of happiness. The dress fit me perfectly, accentuating my figure in a way that made me feel good about myself. I spent extra time on my makeup that day trying to get it just right. I carefully applied eyeshadow, trying to create a subtle, smoky eye look I had seen in a tutorial. 
It was tricky, and I had to start over a few times, but eventually I was satisfied with the result. I added a bit of blush to my cheeks and finished with a swipe of bright red lipstick to match my dress. The final touch was a long, curly brown wig that cascaded down my shoulders. It felt strange at first, having so much hair, but I quickly grew to love the way it framed my face. I looked in the mirror and hardly recognized myself, but in a good way. I felt like I was seeing the real me for the first time. Feeling bold, I decided to go for a walk around the neighborhood. My heart raced as I stepped outside, but the cool breeze felt refreshing against my skin. I walked with my head held high, feeling the fabric of the dress swish around my legs. It was a strange and wonderful feeling, like I was part of a secret world that nobody else knew about. As I walked, I noticed a small group of people gathered in a park nearby. They were laughing and talking, and something about them seemed familiar. I realized they were like me. Some were dressed in clothes typically worn by the opposite gender. I felt a pull towards them, a curiosity to know more. I mustered up my courage and approached them. Hi, I said, my voice shaking a little. I'm new to this, can I join you? They turned to me with welcoming smiles. Of course, one of them said. We're just hanging out and chatting. I'm Jordan, by the way. I introduced myself and we started talking. They told me about their group, a community of cross-dressers and people exploring their gender identity. They met regularly to support each other and share their experiences. I listened, fascinated by their stories. It felt incredible to be around people who understood what I was going through. As the sun began to set, I realized I had spent hours talking with them. I had never felt so accepted and understood. They invited me to meet with them again, and I eagerly agreed. That night, as I lay in bed, I couldn't stop thinking about the day's events. Meeting Jordan and the others had opened up a whole new world to me. For the first time, I didn't feel alone in my journey. I had found a community where I belonged. I spent every spare moment I had with my new friends, learning more about cross-dressing and the different ways people express their gender. We shared tips on makeup and fashion, and they introduced me to new styles and ideas I had never considered. Meanwhile, Clara seemed more distant than ever. She was out most nights, and when she was home, we barely spoke. It was clear that her experiences and the open relationship weren't bringing her the happiness she had hoped for. I wanted to reach out to her, to try and reconnect, but I didn't know how. Our lives were moving in completely different directions, and I wasn't sure if there was a way back to how things used to be. As the weeks went by, my life started to change in ways I never imagined. The group I met at the park became like a second family to me. They welcomed me into their community with open arms, and I began to spend more and more time with them. Each person had their own unique story, and I felt a deep connection with them. One of the most exciting parts of my new life was getting ready for our meetups. I would spend hours choosing the perfect outfit, doing my makeup, and styling my wig. I had collected quite a variety of clothes by then. Skirts, blouses, dresses, and even a few pairs of stylish shoes. Dressing up became a fun and important part of my day. I loved seeing myself transform in the mirror, and each time, I felt more and more like myself. At our gatherings, we often shared stories about our lives and the challenges we faced. It was comforting to know I wasn't alone in my struggles. One night, a friend from the group who I had grown particularly close to suggested I try dating. The idea had never crossed my mind, but it sparked a curiosity in me. Could I really do that? Was I ready to take that step? Encouraged by my friends, I decided to give it a try. I created a profile on a dating app, making sure to be honest about who I was and what I was looking for. It was nerve-wracking at first, but soon I started chatting with a few people. There was one guy in particular I clicked with. He was kind and understanding, and we had a lot in common. After talking for a few weeks, we decided to meet in person. The day of the date, I was a bundle of nerves. I chose a floral print dress and a pair of comfortable flats. I did my makeup carefully, wanting to look my best. As I waited at the agreed-upon cafe, my heart raced with both fear and excitement. 
When he arrived, he greeted me with a warm smile, and we spent hours talking and laughing. It felt natural and easy, like we had known each other for years. Over time, I started going on more dates, not just with guys, but also with other people from the transgender community. I met so many wonderful individuals, each with their own unique experiences and perspectives. It was a time of discovery and growth for me. I felt happy and fulfilled in a way I never had before. Meanwhile, at home, things with Clara were growing more distant. We were like two ships passing in the night, barely interacting. I could tell she was struggling with her own journey in the open relationship. She seemed unhappy and frustrated, often coming home late and looking exhausted. I wanted to help her, to talk to her about what we were both going through, but I didn't know how to start the conversation. Our lives had become so different, and I wasn't sure if there was a way to bridge the gap between us. One evening, as I was getting ready for a night out with my friends, Clara walked into our bedroom. She looked at me, dressed in a pretty lace top and skirt, and there was a sadness in her eyes. You seem really happy with your new friends, she said quietly. I am, I replied honestly. I found a community where I feel like I belong. Time continued to pass, and with each day, my journey into cross-dressing and exploring new relationships became more and more a part of my life. I felt happy and excited about where my life was heading. I had grown more confident in my appearance and in expressing myself. Dressing up had become a regular part of my routine, and I loved experimenting with different styles and looks. On the other hand, Clara's experiences were quite different. She seemed to be struggling with the open relationship. Many nights, she would come home looking unhappy and frustrated. It was clear that her search for something fulfilling outside our marriage wasn't going as she had hoped. She would often sit silently on the couch, staring off into space, lost in her thoughts. I wanted to comfort her, but I wasn't sure how to approach her or what to say. As for me, my social circle had expanded significantly. I had made many new friends within the cross-dressing and transgender community. They were supportive and understanding, always there to offer advice or a listening ear. We would meet up regularly, go out together, and share our experiences. I felt a strong bond with them, a sense of belonging that I hadn't found elsewhere. One evening, as I was getting ready for a night out with my friends, Clara watched me from the doorway of our bedroom. She observed as I picked out a dress, a pretty floral one that made me feel cheerful. I could tell she wanted to say something, but the words seemed to get stuck. Are you going out again? She finally asked, her voice tinged with a hint of sadness. Yes, I'm meeting some friends downtown. We're going to a new cafe that just opened, I replied, trying to keep my tone light. Clara nodded, and then, after a moment of hesitation, she asked, Do you ever miss how things used to be? Between us, I mean. Her question caught me off guard. I paused, looking at her reflection in the mirror. I don't know, I admitted. Things have changed so much, but I do miss some parts of our old life. We both fell silent, lost in our own thoughts. It was a difficult moment, filled with the realization of how far apart we had grown. As I went out that evening, I couldn't shake off the conversation with Clara. It stayed with me, echoing in my mind as I spent time with my friends. For the first time, I started to really consider the impact of our decision to open the relationship and my own journey on our marriage. The next few weeks were a mix of emotions. I continued to explore my identity and enjoy my time with friends, but at home, things were more complicated. Clara and I had started to talk a bit more, but our conversations were often awkward and strained. It was like we were walking on a tightrope, trying to find a balance between our old life and the new paths we were on. One day, Clara came to me with a serious look on her face. I think I made a mistake, she said quietly. I thought this open relationship would help us, but it's only made things harder. Her words hit me hard. I hadn't realized how much she was struggling with the changes. I didn't know what to say. Part of me wanted to go back to how things were, but another part of me knew that I couldn't give up my new life. I was so much happier now than I was before. It's her own fault, I thought. The atmosphere at home became more and more uneasy. Clara and I were like two strangers living under the same roof. 
We tried to talk, to find a way to fix things, but it felt like we were speaking different languages. I could see the sadness in her eyes every time she looked at me, and it made my heart heavy. Meanwhile, in my new life, things were moving forward. I was becoming more involved in the cross-dressing community, attending events and making even more friends. I felt accepted and understood there, something I hadn't felt in a long time. My confidence grew with each passing day, and I started to think about living as a woman full-time. One evening, I went to a big event with my friends. It was a gathering for people like us, a safe space where we could be ourselves without fear. I wore a long, flowing dress that night with a pattern of bright flowers. I had my makeup done just right, and my wig styled perfectly. I felt beautiful and free. At the event, I met so many amazing people. We danced, laughed, and shared stories. I felt a sense of joy and belonging that was new and thrilling. It was there, among friends and music, that I realized this was who I really was. This was where I belonged. After that night, I knew that I couldn't go back to pretending. I had to be true to myself, no matter how hard it might be. I started to plan for a life where I could be the person I truly was, inside and out. Back at home, things with Clara reached a breaking point. One night, she came to me, tears in her eyes. I can't do this anymore, she said softly. I thought I could handle it, but I can't. I miss the way things were, but I know they can never be like that again. Her words were like a cold splash of reality. I knew she was right. We had both changed so much. The people we were when we got married were gone, replaced by who we were now. I understand, I said, feeling a mix of sadness and relief. I'm sorry it had to be this way. We decided it was best to go our separate ways. It was a hard decision, but deep down, we both knew it was the right one. We talked about how to separate our lives, who would move out, and how we would handle everything. It was a tough conversation, but we managed to get through it. In the weeks that followed, I started to transition into living as a woman full-time. It was a big step, but I was ready. I had the support of my friends and the community, which made it easier. I began to change my wardrobe, my hairstyle, and even the way I talked and moved. Every little change brought me closer to feeling complete. Clara moved out a month later. It was a sad day, but there was also a sense of closure. We said our goodbyes, wishing each other the best. I watched as she drove away, feeling a mix of emotions. Part of me was sad for the end of our marriage, but another part of me was excited for the new life that was beginning. I was finally on the path to becoming who I was meant to be. One of the biggest changes was how I presented myself to the world. I started to wear women's clothes all the time, not just at home or at events. I got better at doing my makeup and styling my hair. Every time I looked in the mirror, I saw more and more of the person I felt like inside. As I became more comfortable in my new life, I started to date again. I met a wonderful guy who was kind and understanding. He didn't care that I was different, he liked me for who I was. We went on fun dates, like going to the movies or walking in the park. It was nice to have someone to share things with, someone who made me laugh and feel happy. Meanwhile, I kept in touch with Clara. We talked on the phone sometimes and even met for coffee once. It was a bit awkward at first, but we managed to find a way to be friends. We talked about our lives and how things were going. It was clear that we were both moving on, finding our own paths. Eventually, the time came for me to take the next big step in my journey. I started hormone therapy, which was a big decision. It was something I had thought about for a long time, and after talking to doctors and my friends, I knew it was the right choice for me. The hormones made changes in my body, making me look more like the woman I felt like inside. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.